Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. It's parade season in the Wasatch, and few people love a parade more than Shireen Gorbani. Now, you would think that her enthusiasm originated from her run for Congress, but wait until you hear the real origin story. She's here to share her favorite routes, do's and don'ts, and the perfect song to make an entrance. Over the next few weeks, we are rolling out a three-part summer entertainment guide, and this is part one. It's Thursday, June 8th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Shireen Gorbani, parade enthusiast. Where does your unbridled enthusiasm come from? Like, tell me an origin story. (laughs) Wow, thank you so much for asking me and for having me to speak to this critical topic, I think, in community (laughs) cheer. So I have always loved a parade. My mom grew up in a really small town on the North Dakota, Montana border. And those are some of my earliest parade memories. And it was the kind of town that was so small that you like basically had to be in the parade and then quick sit on the side so that there were enough people to (laughs) both be in the parade and then enough to like watch it. (laughs) Yeah, it's improv. It's improv. Um, So that was like, really, I think for me, it started really early. But then That kind of enthusiasm really extended all the way into, I mean, I remember being in so many of my hometown parades, which was this like folk fest thing that happened in the fall and then would find ways to weasel into the parade that was like the 4th of July parade in the town across the river where they had the 4th of July parade and we did not. And so somehow I had a friend who was into like mascot like uh, costumes. And one year I got to be oh. goofy. I just like asked and she was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I mean, huge regrets. It was so hot and unbelievably uncomfortable. But you have this experience where people are like, goofy, goofy's my favorite. Oh, and then they show you their yeah. goofy tattoos, their goofy keychains. It's like a real trip I didn't anticipate. Mm-hmm. And anyway, and I think, you know, in high school, I was so into this kind of like big idea that I was the mascot of my high school. <laughs> And sometimes would be in parades like with that kind of association. Okay, but what what was the mascot? Well, this is a, a big issue of controversy. So I went to a Catholic <laughs> high school, and okay. there were two mascots. We had what? the like saint, so we were the saints, which was basically an angel. But there was the football team had their own, and it was a shark. <laughs> I don't know if that's about like Catholics eating fish on Fridays or whatever. Like, I don't know why they had their own. They just didn't want to be angels. Right. Like, it was a masculinity thing. I mean, this is, it's it's so bizarre for so many reasons, including the fact that, like, at the time, the football rivalry was, like, real now. I don't think they really compete. But the other main high school in town were the Demons. And so it was, like, the Demons and the Saints. But then we had this weird shark. But because we had this weird (laughs) shark, I had the, like, most incredible experience of my life, which was I got to dress as the saint, like, you know, an angel, basically. And we opened a new football stadium when I was in high school. And I got to deliver the game, game day ball, like the first ball played on that field from a helicopter. They helicoptered me (laughs) in the ball. And they said that I had to do it because the shark, they were afraid the shark's head, the like extra tall head was a risk with the helicopter. (laughs) (laughs) But a slight detail about that is that I go to get into the helicopter and I have to go to the hospital because I'm in like in a small town. There's not like a lot of helicopters. So they say go down to the ER go in and then you'll wait there and then they'll take you up to the roof. And I was like, okay, sounds great. So I walk in dressed as an angel (laughs) and all these people are like, oh, great, you're here, like have a seat. And then finally this nurse is like, you cannot sit in the waiting room of like an ER dressed like this. (laughs) No, I was going to say, there are probably some people in the hospital that saw you walk in and were like, oh no, this is it. Yeah, this This is is it. it. She's here to get me. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyway, so I've had a long love of this. And I have to say, it was one of the things I think about political campaigning that I really loved. And I think I maybe was a little different than everyone in my family, all of my friends, and then also many other candidates that I've met that don't really seem to love 
the parade experience, but wow, I love it. Do you remember your first Utah parade? Oh, wow. Was it campaigning? No, I walked for many years in the Pride Parade with different organizations, Planned Parenthood, different people over the years, different groups. So I had been in the Pride Parade a few times, but as a candidate, I believe that Pride was my first parade in that political space as well. Yeah. I think it says a lot about Utah that our second, I think it's our second biggest parade after the Days of 47 parade, also known as Pioneer Days, is Pride. Yeah, is Pride. It's it's big. It's long. They've made it longer. It's a real ordeal. I quite enjoy it as it's been established. I'm a parade enthusiast. <laughs> okay, well, let's get right into it then in terms of ranking parades, because I want to know what you think is the best like summer parade on the Wasatch Front. Oh, right. Number one is Magna Independence Day Parade. That is a fantastic Mm. parade. And it's great for so many reasons. But it also feels wild in a way that some of the other ones don't. I will say there's another one that I think is maybe more charming. But the just the kind of wild, unbridled exuberance the kind of American exceptionalism that allows people to like blow parts of their fingers off on the 4th of July, that (laughs) energy is the entire vibe of the Magna Independence Day parade. And it's so fun. And it is to this kind of weird scenario where Main Street and Magna is darling. I love it. And I don't think a lot of people have experienced it. So I recommend experiencing it. But also, if you go to see the parade, make sure you get on Main because the parade kind of comes to this neighborhood. It's great. People are great. And then you turn onto Main Street and it's just so cute and like dense. And I like how it feels like people are just cracking beers on the street in Magna. And it feels really wild. Well, there's a casualness to it. There's a casualness to it. it Yeah. Yeah. And people are having a lot of fun. And at that point in the day, it's still pretty safe. Okay, then quick note, because there are there is a big habit in Utah of staking out parade spots. Yeah. And I'm not sure it's always worth it. Like, I think some of our big parades, you don't really need to stake out. You can kind of just go in and wiggle your way through yes. to the front or around. You think it's worth staking out a spot in Magna? No, I think that it's still a long enough stretch of street that you could show up and get up there, but it really does mm. get pretty packed in. So, you know, if you can bring a bike over, maybe, you know, you might have to park a little further away, bike in, or just plan a little extra time to get down onto Main Street because it's really charming. It's fun. It's wild. It's got great energy. The music's great. Like yeah. people are just having a great time. Yeah. Magna also has one of the county rec center outdoor pools. So you could like oh, splash make a afterwards. day of it. Yeah, it's a great yeah. idea. They also have not a parade, but another fun summer activity that they have end of summer is the Labor Day gathering that they have yes. in, in the park. And that is a great place where you can go see there's a, always a car show. There are a lot of fun activities. And I really think that's a good event too, a good family event. That's a really fun time. Yeah, I agree. And the town is like full of union families. And it's just super fun. It's cool. Okay, you mentioned a front runner that you would would call the most charming parade on the front. Which one is that? So a surprising entry for me in most charming is Sandy. So Sandy's mm. is in the evening. And if I'm remembering correctly, it's it's a loop and you kind of double loop it. So you kind of go through the same loop. Twice. This is on the 4th of July. It is on the 4th of July in the evening. Okay. And as I remember it, I have to say that last year that I did it, there was, I believe, a storm that kind of rolled in. Mm. And so I can't remember if I got to experience the whole thing. But what I know is that they typically have music and it's kind of this more like traditional all. But it's really, it's kind of, it's just like cute and cozy and charming. I believe Draper also has one. I'm trying to remember if Draper's is on the 4th of July or not. I think it may not be. But that parade was surprisingly kind of quaint and and charming as well. You don't really think about Draper as having kind of a main street, but they really do have this little city center. And you go through that. It's quite shaded, actually, which is also a high priority for me at this point in parades. Yeah. I think you're thinking of Draper Days. It's Draper Days. That's yeah. July 15th. That's like the mid-July thing where they do Draper Days and they do That's their That's a parade. charming one, too. But if you're looking mm-hmm. for something on the 4th, I do recommend Sandy. It's just a nice setup and you can be out on, there's like a lot of lawn space and like I said, kind of music and things like that. Yeah. Also, honorable mention in terms of Sandy parades would be the Heritage Festival because 
they finally brought back the horse parade oh, after nice. 15 years. So last year was the first year after 15 years that they did the Sandy horse parade again. Yeah. And it is a true horse parade. And like everyone gets all dressed up and that's in the fall, that's in September, which some people consider September still summer and those people are me and I think you. Yeah. But like September Sandy horse parade, also great for families. I think we should see if we can get in it again. Would they let, allow like a city cast? Well, we're, we're going to have to get a city cast horse is what no we're going to have to do. So we'll just get, we'll work on that line item <laughs> okay. in the budget. Hey, city cast Salt Lake. It's Michael Zibiak. While city cast Salt Lake works hard every day to connect you with the stories that matter most, I'm working in the background making sure that our listeners are connecting with the best that Salt Lake has to offer. So what does that look like? It means meeting with the people who make Salt Lake what it is. The business owners, the stakeholders, the decision makers, the Salt Lakers who put together those food festivals you enjoy, the concerts you attend, the exhibits you can't miss, and who make those candles your mom can't stop talking about. If this sounds like you, let me help you get your message out to the city's best audience with an ad right here on the CityCast Salt Lake podcast and on our sister daily newsletter, Hey Salt Lake. Shoot me an email at ads at citycast.fm and let's connect. Okay, what other parades do you love? Any other front runners that we missed? What I can say is that this one I, is not it's fun, but it has an unusual route. So I think Murray is also quite good, except mm. I give it demotions because the beginning of it, this might be, I, I sh really should have looked it up. I'm sorry, Murray, if I'm getting this wrong. But I think the beginning of that thing kicks you right onto State Street. And anyway, it's a very busy street at the beginning. And that mm. feels so strange because you're in this like large street, like six lanes. They You're only taking half of it. But then you turn and you go into the Central Park and the Central Park portion of oh. it is a delight. So if you go, do not get on the front end, get on the back end of that parade. It's really, that park is great. And it, it again, it's cool. It's shaded. It's like fun. There are places for people to run around. It's good. Okay. I Because that's the parade that starts at Fashion Place. It sure does. Okay. Good point. That is a little... Odd. It's odd as it turns and then goes into the park. That would be a very short parade, but the the wind up to that moment is unpleasant. Yeah. Okay. Zooming out from your own personal love of parades. Okay. Which is infectious. Can't get enough. Because I didn't even know that I knew so many parades, and then I feel like you really drew it out of me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Why do you think Utah is such a parade hotbed? Like, why do Utahns love parades? Okay, well, I can say that this is, there are a few reasons that I think Utahns love parades. I do think that they are a fundamental representation of community. And I think about mm -hmm. that a lot with our two biggest, the Pride Parade and the Days of 47. The, yeah. the way that people relate to those kind of you know, identities or the sense of community coming together, turning out, like showing up, and then a tie to history, right? There's mm -hmm. always kind of a historic narrative that goes along with them. So I think those are really important in some of those cases. And then I can say, I mean, from my experience in many parades, I mean, we haven't even talked, I've done Riverton, I've definitely done Murray, I've done Sandy, Draper, all of this. There is this kind of sense that people come back into town, they're kind of orienting family time around this. I will also say something that's nerve wracking if you're driving a vehicle in the, one of these parades, but there are so many kids in this state. And as a person yeah. who developed my deep love as a child of parades, you can see people who are just really excited to see people turn out for their community. And sometimes, you know, it's things like the oldest couple, <laughs> like they're yes. being driven around in like a convertible. Um, or uh -huh. sometimes, you know, people who are restoring old vehicles in their communities. Um, there, there's all this sort of tie to, I think, sense of place, connection, and history that really resonates. And it's fun for kids, and it's cheap. It's cheap. That's what I was going to say. Like, you, if, no matter what size your family is, you can bring them down to the parade, and basically your cost is going to be getting to the parade route, gas, and yeah. whatever food and bev you want to bring with you, which yeah. you can bring your own, which is also a more affordable way to 
kind of do activities. The other thing that I think that you kind of touched on is like the float culture, which is engages a lot of clubs and organizations. Yeah. And like Utah, I feel like is such a state where people really value. Well, we know that we're the highest. We have the highest rate of volunteerism in the nation for like volunteering through clubs or organizations. And so, like, I think a lot of people are tethered in some way to an organization, whether that's, like, their ward, their church, whether it's, like, a Planned Parenthood or where the they city. volunteer yeah. or the city or, like, they're sort of obsessed with a certain, like, their knitting club or some sort of a hobby-related thing. Like, a lot of people are just connected to organizations. And so when the parade comes around, it's like, okay, well, we got to make our float or our entry. What's that going to look like? And it's very collaborative. Yeah. And they're really quite stunning. They're often, I mean pretty intricate. They're quite professional. They're amazing. I've never personally been part of making a float, but I I do have that as a goal for myself. Maybe next year. (sighs) Listen, I mean, as you and I both know, your birthday is always around pride. And I do feel like you need to jump out of a cake eventually. Like you need need a giant cake float. Yeah. I know. Okay. Before I let you go, I have a lightning round for you. Oh, okay. Of parade tips for listeners. Okay. Okay. So as quickly as possible, I've got six quick categories. Give me your take. Give me your answer. Okay. 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 Best candy to throw. Oh, it's taffy. It just, it hucks really well. It's not that good to eat. And, but like chocolate melts, suckers can really, you can really whop somebody with a sucker. It's, it is taffy. That's why people throw taffy. Okay. Footwear of choice. So for me, it is always a wedge that's like a heel situation. But I do, Mm -hmm. I have been convinced that sneakers, especially with the two mile long pride parade route, sneakers, a decorative sneaker. Okay. Parade beverage. Okay. This, it is water, straight up water. Mm -hmm. Some of these I have been on are you you have to be in line for hours and hours and hours. I highly recommend coffee. <laughs> you know, mm. I have two AirPods if somebody Yeah, but needs then you them. have to pee. Well, you got it because there you have to be hydrated for these things, especially these 4th of July, the 24th. It is too damn hot. You got to stay hydrated. Okay. Unless you're on Main Street and Magna and then it's Coors Light. Okay, keep going. Oh, yeah. Coors Banquet. Okay. Must have in your purse. I think sunscreen. <laughs> sunscreen. I had a feeling you'd say that. Ultimate parade song. Okay, so for me, the ultimate parade song is one of my favorite songs, which is Rufus and Chaka Khan's Tell Me Something Good. I think it just lays down a (laughs) funky beat. And it's like fun. It's good to groove to. People kind of like hear it coming and they have a nice, you know, they have a little bop. So I'm going to go with Rufus and, you know, Chaka Khan, Tell Me Something Good. Okay, last one. Best way to beat the heat in the street. Umbrella. It's an umbrella. Yeah. And then the umbrella becomes another thing you can decorate. Yeah. Well, you know, I I do. I can promise if you'll allow me to share some photos of different looks I've had over the years and they almost always have an umbrella. Yeah. Well, you'll be able to see those on our Instagram page today at CityCast SLC. Shireen Gorbani, Parade Enthusiast, thank you so much for your time. I mean it when I say this. I will see you in these streets. (laughs) (laughs) And hopefully on a horse. Looking for another reason to walk down the middle of the road? Check out the Green Loop. It closes this Saturday, June 10th, so this is your last chance. Unless they make it permanent, of course. Salt Lake City has assembled a 190-tree oasis in the middle of 200 East between 3rd and 4th South. On weekdays, it's had lunchtime food trucks. And on the weekend, it's being run by Little City, bringing in local brewers and musicians to convert it into a beer garden. Lead producer Emily Means and I did some work from there and even caught a little Wi-Fi from the library. This mini green loop was constructed as a test to see how residents would respond to a more permanent mini park activation. Could Salt Lake soon see plans for a larger, more ambitious green loop? Let's hope. The long-term project has the potential to create up to 60 acres of forest integrated into five and a half miles of city streets. I put a link in the show notes if you want to learn more. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. Thank you for listening. We will be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. Bye.